It's this thing on. Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Welcome to Monday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And if you're feeling charitable, please smash that subscribe button and the like button. And please follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. On today's show, we'll be, um, be, we'll be reading two articles from Screen Rant about the Batman. One about Bruce Wayne's billionaire context in the real world. Secondly, how Screen Rant think a, a, a Joker movie 2 kind of post-credit um, scene in the Batman would work really well. I haven't read either of these articles yet, so that's going to be fun. We're also going to be talking about James Gunn being attacked on Twitter by a fan referencing the culture war. Very interesting what broke last night and what happened and James' reaction to it. And I've also been asked by my fellow members of the Snyder community to talk about why I love Zack Snyder. Now, I don't know Zack Snyder personally, but I'm going to tell you why I love him as a storyteller, an artist, and a film director. That's all coming up on Monday's edition of the DCEU Daily. Let's go! Screen Rant. The Batman addresses Bruce Wayne's billionaire status in today's context. Matt Reeves, the director of The Batman, addresses Bruce Wayne's billionaire status in today's context. The Batman is the upcoming DC superhero movie starring Robert Pattinson. Pattinson will be replacing Ben Affleck who betrayed the titular role in Justice League 2017. The film will serve as a reboot to the film franchise about the Cape Crusader. The cast includes Zoe Kravitz as Selina Kyle, Catwoman, Paul Dano as Edward Nashton Riddler, Jeffrey Wright as James Gordon, and Andy Serkis as Alfred Pennyworth. Probably my favourite piece of casting, by the way. The movie will be part of the DCEU Extended Universe. I'm not convinced this is actually a reboot, by the way. But that's another discussion we've had umpteen times. Batman is one of the most recognised and iconic comic book heroes of all time. The masked crime fighter made his debut in Detective Comics 27 in 1939. Since then, the hero has been portrayed by a long list of actors through different mediums before Pattinson. The character was most recently played by Ben Affleck and Christian Bale. Batman's alter ego is, of course, Bruce Wayne, a wealthy playboy billionaire, philanthropist, Philanthropists, I can't bloody read, can I? Where am I? Who owns Wayne Enterprises. His wealth and resources assist him in his crime fighting mission, providing him the, with the necessary tools, weapons, and gadgets to bring down cr the criminal underworld. Wayne wasn't always a billionaire. It wasn't until 1994's Batman Legends of the Dark Knight 61 when, the first, when he first received the billionaire status in a story. Despite his place in the top nor one percent of society, fans have still been able to relate to the character and follow his stories. Because if you can't relate to someone because they're rich, same wrong with you. you. You know, everyone doesn't have to be you on the screen. And I don't understand this modern day mentality. During an interview with the Daily Beast, director Matt Reeves discussed the upcoming movie and talked about how a billionaire superhero still works today. Reeves was asked about being rooted in uh, social, socio-political socio issues and whether or not it is difficult to make a billionaire superhero work. Reeves responded to me, that's the joy of working with it. You use those service elements of it and you explore them in a, a way that I feel they haven't been explored yet. Reeves mentioned that every director who helmed a Batman movie had their particular take on it. He did not want to do just another Batman movie, but rather do one where he's allowed to explore ideas that matter to him. Reeves followed by stating that the Batman will be, made in, will be made in the context of today. It's like any great tale that you can keep revisiting uh, through, though the context of the times and also through the context of human experience, and find new ways to come at the character that illuminates something that's meaningful to you and hopefully meaningful to the audience. While fans are undoubtedly eager to see what sort of choices Reeves ultimately makes with the movie, they may have, they have, they may have to wait a bit longer. Why, why do they do this? Why go down this, this narrative? It doesn't matter how long we have to wait. Well, I'm here to talk about this film. Oh, 
While the Batman was initially scheduled for June 25th, 2021 release date, production on the film has been shut down definitely due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The, the movie may fall victim to the complete overhaul in terms of when it finally hits theaters. However, there is still the chance that the film is released on time, depending on how the current worldwide crisis pans out. So we don't really want to talk about that. That's very, very boring. And only boring um, YouTube channels with a million subscribers talk about if films are going to be cancelled or when they're going to be released. We want to talk about the re real issues. Do you, are you, do you relate to Batman? despite him being a millionaire. Do you relate to Bruce Wayne? I do. There's not one minute, even in the original 1960s Batman series, where I thought, well, he's a millionaire. I don't think he should be, you know, I don't think he should be breathing because he's like a millionaire, a billionaire. I can't relate with him. He's a bad person. He's got money. Um, no, never. And it's, it's just dumb and stupid. It's not an issue. It's like people who say they don't relate to Superman because he's too powerful or because he's an alien. It's dumb. It's it's a dumb way. If you just want yourself represented, it's boring. First of all, representation isn't really important to me. I know it matters to a hell of a lot of people. It doesn't really matter to me. I want to see great characters fleshing out, great commentary on these characters, great action set pieces, and a great Batman movie. And that is all I need from my superhero movies. Thank you very much. How the Batman could set up Arthur Fleck's Joker in its post-credits. The Batman could potentially introduce Arthur Fleck from Joker in its post credit sequence. Here's how. Directed by Matt Reeves, the Batman is currently scheduled to release in 2021 and will mark, mark the debut of Robert Pattinson as Gotham, uh, Gotham's top vigilante. Although Reeves has confirmed the Batman won't be an origin story, it's clear from the images released so far that viewers will meet the new Dark Knight at an early stage in his crime-fighting career. And various reports from on, on set have indicated a 2000s setting, with Riddler, Penguin, Catwoman all confirmed to appear. It's highly unlikely that the Batman will play its Joker card in the main film, whether that be a version fans have seen before or a brand new actor. I think the Joker will play a part in this film, but let's see. Released in, in, the late, released in late 2019, uh, Todd Phillips' Joker was an anom anomaly on the superhero calendar, a low-budget R-rated indie piece completely disconnected from the wider DC universe. Joker went to, on to attract plaudits and awards galore, while also cleaning up at the box office on its way to becoming the most pro profitable comic book movie ever. While nothing officially has come to light, Joker's success automatically invited talk of a sequel, with Joaquin Phoenix reprising his heralded role as Arthur Fleck. Another option would be to in integrate Fleck into an existing DC series. And the Batman is, of, is the obvious option. As mentioned above, Joker almost certainly won't feature in the Batman's main story. We'll have to see about that. But that doesn't mean a post credit sequence can't set, up, set the villain up for a sequel, similar to how the Batman begins leads into the Dark Knight. After Pattinson's first Batman adventure comes, comes to an end and the less seasoned superhero fans have le left the theatre, the Batman's post credit scene could begin by panning down the face of a large building, revealing a sign above the door that leads, reads Arkham, Arkham State Hospital. The front entrance swings open and out comes a newly released Arthur Fleck, clutching his belongings and timidly returning to the outside world. With that trademark uncertain walk approaching the camera, Fleck surveys the Gotham City streets and um, the, a menacing grin spreads over his face. The theatre lights come up. This ending would actually make more sense than one might assume. Given that Batman and Joker aren't officially connected at present, Joker takes place in 81 and the Batman in the 2000s. It's within the realm of possibility that Fleck could be released after this 20-year period, either via appeal or a very good lawyer. And the character wouldn't be too old to trouble Batman either. Flex reappearance in this manner wouldn't even need to confirm how much of it of, of Joker was real. The asylum scenes were legit, and that's all viewers need to know. Introducing Fleck would mean that the Batman could have its own clown print of crime without casting yet another actor, and would simultaneously appease calls for a Joker sequel. Vitally, Fleck's original cinematic downfall gives him 
a, a ready-made grudge against Bruce, Bruce Wayne. The Batman and Joker are the only two modern DC movies not in any way connected to the DCEU. It's only logical to, to, to dovetail them into one distinct Batman series, minimalizing confu confusing over the layout of DC's movie franchise. First of all, as I keep on saying, there is no confirmation from Matt Reeves or anyone else that the Batman is not connected to the DCEU. Now, I do like this idea. I do. I would love um, Whacking Phoenix's Joker to be involved in the wider DCEU and in the Batman. I believe the Batman is connected to the DCEU. But at the moment, not all of us fans agree with that. Um, we're all very confused how this fits, if it's a reboot, if it's Batfleck. Nobody actually knows for sure. And that's the point. As awe-inspiring as it would be if Arthur Fleck strolled into frame during the Batman's post credit scene, his appearance would raise some issues. Reeves appears to be developing a reasonable dark take on the bat fiend vigilante. But his film certainly won't match Joker's unflinching horror, meaning Fleck would have to be toned down somewhat. The Batman 2 would ha then have to find a way of retaining Fleck's menace and edge without upsetting film certification balls. More importantly, many Joker fans have argued that the film worked perfectly as a standalone venture, and any sequel would risk ruining the original bringing of Arthur Fleck into the world of the Batman might have a similarly negative impact on the character's legacy. What do we think of that? Well, comment down below, but what I think is anything's possible now. The Joker movie made over a billion dollars globally. It is officially the most profitable comic book movie of all time. Before you start shouting at me, I know about the MCU and their box office, but they spend more money on their movies. This movie didn't even cost a hundred million to make. It's the most profitable comic book movie of all time. Fact. It's the most critically acclaimed, acclaimed comic book movie of all time. Fact. This movie is going to get a sequel. I keep on hearing, you know, big YouTube accounts saying, why? The Joker shouldn't have a sequel. It was a great standalone movie and just leave it at that. No, 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 no. I want to see Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. I want to see Whacking Phoenix as Arthur Fleck again. That's the whole point. I would love this. I am very excited to see what they do with Arthur Fleck, whether they bring him into the DCEU, which is unlikely, but I would like to see that. I think that is definitely the more realistic situation here is eventually for us to get a Joker sequel. I think there are many ideas. And after the movie, before the movie, um, both Whacking and Todd were saying, no, it's just standalone. After the film and after they saw the box office and the critical acclaim, they were both saying, well, they both do have ideas for a sequel. Surprise, surprise, knock me down silly and tickle me. Please don't. Joker 2 is going to happen, whether you like it or not. Oh, you got to love Twitter. You've got to love Hollywood, haven't you? I'm going to read out something that James Gunn posted from, that someone else did. It's very aggressive. Um, there's sexual swear words in it. These sexual swear words are not coming from me. They're coming from this person. So basically, he's posted this on a blackboard, James, and he, he didn't want, obviously, to give the guy or the girl who posted this any kind of airtime. So this is what the person said. Hey, let's just imagine it's an American. Hey, I just want to say... Your movies are fucking trash and feminist shit doesn't work. Also, the racism, the racism shit. Your movie will flop. Emo, stop fucking being feminist and not racist bullshit and make better movies with good quality. This is just a movie. We don't want some political shit and races, racism message. We don't give a fuck. We just want to watch a DC, great DC movies like Watchmen and V for Vendetta and Man of Steel. And BVS, so stop, cha stop changes the color. So, sorry, so stop, this is how he talks. So stop changes the color of the characters and make them female or make a white guy to black low to fight racism. You're fighting racism with racism. So James responds to the quote tweet by saying, oh, it's just advice. Okay, thanks. First time I remember being told to stop being not racist. Right. I do have a bit to say about this. 
I, I do have an opinion about this. There's lots of issues to unpackage here. Um, first of all, um, this is from, obviously, a fellow DCEU fan, a fellow Snyder DCEU fan. This is the side of our movement that is really, really, really ugly. Uh, they're not happy that Zack Snyder's not involved anymore. And this Snyder fan, I'm a Snyder fan too, but this Snyder fan has gone about things the wrong way. They love, you know, SJWs love exposing things like this because it makes us look dumb. It makes us look stupid. You can kind of forward this kind of thinking um, as part of the culture war, but you've got to be more refined. You've got to be more intelligent with your words because this is how I would have done it. Right. Hi, James. I just want to say um, I don't like your films, basically. Um, this feminist man bad agenda that's going on in Hollywood right now is very triggering and it's not very entertaining. And I just want to watch great DC films, basically. Um, that's where I would have left it. I promise you, if I said that, he would not even have touched him. He would ne never have posted it or made a joke of it. And here's the thing. There is a culture war in Hollywood. From the moment Donald Trump was elected as president of the United States, Hollywood were triggered. And everything they do now is labelled as shout shouting at Donald Trump. Of course, this makes no actual difference. Donald Trump's still going to be president. He's still going to be making decisions that hurt a hell of a lot of Americans and a hell of a lot of people around the world. Donald Trump is still going to be talking shit, whatever Hollywood do. But we are in the midst of a culture war. Now, what surprised me about this? I don't think that James Gunn's films are terribly progressive. Uh, I don't. You could... I don't really think there's... Re I don't really think the women are particularly putting down men. I think the Guardians movies, we've got some really strong women in them, and they're great. I love the Guardians movies. I don't really see what the issue is here. But I think the real issue is here that this guy wants Snyder back, doesn't like the fact that James Gunn from the MCU is doing a, a Suicide Squad movie and probably will be making more Suicide Squad movies and probably will be making a string of Harley movies as well. I think it definitely looks like James Gunn, he's been saying things like, I prefer Harley to the Joker. He's making noises of a man who really, really wants to set the narrative for Harley Quinn. He's already confirmed she's in this film a hell of a lot. And it, it's a situation now where they can't really fix what happened with Birds of Prey. But as my opinion to not liking the, the current agenda in Hollywood. First of all, I would say they don't make a, a, a varied amount of movies. Uh, we used to have a little joke, and when we were kids, there was these music producers called Stock Aiken and Waterman. They had Rick Astley, Kylie Minogue, Jason Donovan. I loved all that stuff. But we always used to joke that every new single was just a version of the song before. And this is what Hollywood's become. But it goes deeper with that. Not only do they lack the imagination and the ambition that they once did. I remember Stephen Amell saying a couple of days ago that he'd watched Interview with a Vampire uh, for the first time with his wife. His wife knows it off by heart. And he said, I, I, don't, I can't believe I never saw this movie. It's so amazing. Yes, the movies that we grew up with were amazing. And it wasn't about political commentary. It was about compelling and entertaining an audience. But here's where I am now. Instead of shouting on a video or getting angry, I have a cabinet full of beautiful movies that I grew up with. Some modern movies that I actually like, like Man of Steel and BVS, so on. I can watch whatever I want, whenever I want. For me, embrace the stuff that means something to you. And if these filmmakers want to continue doing things like Doctor Who season, what, not just filmmakers, just TV producers, channels, studios, want to carry on making things like Doctor Who season 11 and season 12, which is really vanilla just in the sake, for the sake of commentary and representation, don't get involved with it. Watch the stuff that means something to you. Let's talk about what Zack Snyder means to me as a filmmaker of two of the best DC films ever made. I want to talk about Luis Fernando. I like Luis Fernando. He's an interesting guy, but sometimes I think he talks without any context. So this is what he said. Like yesterday or the day before, 
According to James Gunn, the Suicide Squad has been his favourite project so far. The soundtrack is finished and he is currently editing uh, during his quarantine. The movie takes place in 2021, so after Birds of Prey. Harley Quinn, one of his favourite characters, and Margot Robbie, his hero. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So I commented in this saying he's staying with DC, I'm sure of it, after Guardians, bet he will get to run Harley too. So Lewis replied to that and said, if Suicide Squad is a massive hit, which it's obviously going to be, and I believe it can be, I think it, it, he would return to make more things at DC as well. But um, the, whatever, it, whatever he's trying to say will be out when he will be filming. Um, the Suicide Squad will be out when he will be filming uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So I wouldn't be shocked if Kevin Feige tries to convince him to stay at Marvel, even as his successor. And then I, I, what do I say after that? I can't remember what I said, but basically, he comes back again. I said, basically, I said something on the context of, there's no, basically, he seems to want to carry on working with DC and he doesn't have any plans, he said, to make any Marvel movies after Guardians. So he responds to this by saying, because Fake won't be in that position forever and before Gunn being uh, fired from Disney, the, the rumours were that Kevin Feige was already thinking of James Gunn to replace him when he decided to move on. That's it, Lewis. You're working off rumours. Lewis, just think about this, mate. Feige is not going to retire as head of MCU and Marvel Studios for probably 20 years. How old is the guy now? Nearly 50. He can stay there. He's not a runner. He's not a boxer. He's going to be there for a very long time. So really, you're shooting at the wind. This is how I just replied. Before Disney sacked Gunn and the narrative changed, Gunn already saying he has nothing else planned with Marvel after Guardians. The reality is that Gunn can make both MCU and DCEU movies. He's a filmmaker. He wants to make films, not sit behind the desk. I'm sure that Lewis is going to keep on coming back with this agenda of him taking up um, Gunn taking over leadership of Marvel Studios uh, from Fake. But that, my friends, is simply the duck that doesn't hunt. And let me explain to you why. Why would a, a prolific filmmaker and director and writer come off the set, come off the green screen, stop writing and directing, and just sit behind the desk? There will be no reason for him to do that. As I say, they sacked him. The relationship is very strained now. He's back just to finish his trilogy. Then he's gone. But also, there is a, a chance and a reality of him doing both Marvel and DC movies. He's already talked about uniting the fans, both MCU and DCEU, and how we should all be friends and more respectful and just have a little bit of friendly banter. So even by those words, it looks like he wants to kind of um, straddle the fence kind of thing. I'm fine with James Gunn making DC content and Marvel content. But for me, the reality is this, that after Guardians 3, He's going to come to DC, he's going to make a string of Harley movies, and he's going to carry on his Suicide Squad universe. We may even have a Batman Suicide Squad kind of crossover, or a Justice League Suicide Squad crossover, which James Gunn and Matt Reeves could both kind of work together in a compromise, which will be very, very interesting. So my assertion is this, that the Suicide Squad is going to be a major hit, whatever your agenda and narrative, narrative and point of view is. And James Gunn's future is at the DCEU. Jeffrey Warfield um, sent me this message on Twitter today. He added me. He's a big Snyder fan. And this is what he had to say. So I was thinking about a last minute week long event for us to do. That is to get why we love Zach trending. What got me thinking about this was the negativity lately in the movement. Uh, lately. <laughs> and uh, in the moment, and, and and the world. So what what we do is for YouTubers make a video on a personal level on why you want Zach. Uh, basically, I like this idea. Um, why you want Zach? Basically, I'm going to talk about now why I appreciate Zach and why I want him back making DC movies. Yes. So Jeffrey Warfield, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to do this now. We're going to discuss it. And um, I, look, I could easily make a separate video about this, but there's no point. Uh, let's do it all here. Now, on today's DCEU Daily. So, I didn't know who Zack Snyder was when he was announced to be directing Man of Steel. I'd watched, um, 
I, I, I'd watched a couple of his films. I love, um, I, I love 300. I think 300 is one of the most amazing visual, visual films I have ever seen. But I will be honest, his, his non-DC movies, I don't know them so well. What I know Zack Snyder for, of course, Watchmen. I saw Watchmen as well. I love that film. But I, again, I don't know it so well. I don't know the characters so well. I know DC. So Man of Steel and Batman v Superman is the reason I love Zack Snyder. And that's why I was so devastated to see the betrayal put on to him by Kevin Sujihara and forcing him out of the studio and the DC movies. Because for me, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman are just so unique, blustering, beautiful, visually emotional, compelling films. You really do feel you've... I'll tell you how you feel after you've seen a Snyder DC movie. It's like someone's put you in this big bin, right? And by mistake, he's going to put you in the compactor and, and and you've gone in the compactor and you're like this, you're trying to stop it from eating you, right? It is it is like that, a vibration. When you're watching his movies, it's like you're in his movies. It's like you're going through an experience. His movies are amazing. Now, I've already said that I believe Man of Steel is more of a Christopher Nolan and David S. Goyer story than a Zack Snyder story, but visually it's Zack's, and Man of Steel looks absolutely stunning, beautiful, robust. I've never seen a superhero movie or a blockbuster made on that level. It is beautiful, it's stunning, and I couldn't stop going back to the theatre because of those reasons. Now, Batman v Superman has all that action and all that visual um, gratification, but Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is more a Zack Snyder story than Man of Steel is. There's no Christopher Nolan anymore. So Zack and Chris Terrio and David Goyer set up this story. It's a sequel to Man of Steel. There is no question of that. This film is so unique, not in just the way it looks and it feels, but it's the themes. It's the commentary. It's not a film trying to be faithful to any comic. I agree with that. So I understand why maybe the comic book fans are a bit upset. But this is a film that has got brilliant commentary about Superman and Batman and their place in the modern day world. And it, as I say, it, it, it tears them to pieces, but then builds them back up again. And it's just a beautiful piece of commentary for two of the, the most recognized characters in fiction, the most popular superheroes, right? It is an amazing film. It's an amazing story. And if you watch Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, the ultimate edition, you are going to have the most amazing, robust, emotional, compelling um, movie experience of your life. And these two films are evidence enough why Zack Snyder should still be making DCEU content. I want him back. I'm fighting for the Snyder Cut. I'm fighting for the air cut. I want Zack back, and I want to see the Snyder Cut for these reasons. He's an amazing man, just in the fight he's put forward, and the way he's galvanised us as fans to fight for his cut of Justice League is an amazing thing. All this is proven to me, not that I didn't know already, that Zack is a very intelligent man, but ultimately my interest in Zack isn't as a human being, I'm not going to lie, um, I don't know Zack Snyder. I don't know what type of man he is. I don't know what what type of type of life he leads. From the outside looking in, he he looks like a really compassionate, um, brilliant guy. But that stuff doesn't interest me. What interests me about Zack Snyder is the type of way he makes movies is amazing. The sensory the sensory satisfaction I get from his films, the emotional satisfaction I get from his films. That's why I'm involved. I didn't start liking or saying I like Zack Snyder films so I could keep on making lots of videos and get lots of followers. I genuinely love these movies. So for me, I don't know everything about Zack Snyder and I don't need to. I don't know much about Watchmen or 300, but I do know about MOS and Beavius. For me, they are two of the best films I have ever seen. No one can make a film look as beautiful and as stunning. And the visual sensibilities in his craft and his art is something that no other filmmaker has got. And for Warner Brothers to say they don't want that and they don't want to use that in comic book movies, 
is absolutely astounding. And that's why I love Zack Snyder as an artist, a storyteller, and a director. And that's why I want him back making DCEU content. Comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe. I will be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. But for now, have a beautiful day.